Okay, today I thought I would uh, say a little bit about um, sort of the history of Photoshop and how various tools were developed in Photoshop for uh, controlling the, uh, changing the tones of our images. Um, so I'd like to start out here with, a, uh, with four photographs and just to show you a little bit about um, make the connection between the histogram and the controls we're using to adjust uh, the tones in the image. So what I've got here is we're talking about Photoshop uh, CC 2014, but these controls have been around forever uh, in most of the versions of Photoshop. If we look over on the right-hand side, we see we have a histogram that corresponds to this image. Let me click on the little warning sign. It gives me an updated image of that uh, particular histogram. And I'm going to tip my screen back a little to get rid of some reflections in my background. Okay, so the deal is when we look at an image like this, we can see that the image was basically shot underexposed. Um, we have blacks over, uh, the way we read a histogram, of course, is on the black edge of the histogram, uh, we're looking at the dark tones. In the middle of the histogram, we're looking at the midtones. And on the right side of the histogram, we're looking at the highlights. Uh, uh, so the higher tones, the brighter tones in the image. And basically, the, the argument here is that uh, whenever we are capturing uh, an image, particularly with a digital sensor, that the sensor is always producing noise. And if you think about it, we need to capture a correct amount of light. I think of it as filling up a bucket of light. And when we get the bucket full, we have enough light so that uh, basically we've captured all the light we can and we've saturated the, the pixel of that particular bit of the sensor. And that's what we're going for, because the advantage of that is that we have a lot of good information, we call that signal, and we have a lot of some bad information, which we call electronic noise. And the object is to get the highest signal to noise ratio we can, because that gives us the cleanest looking image. So when we blow it up and we zero in on it, and we pixel peep and we take it up to 3,000% in the dark shadow areas, we don't want to see any noise if we can help it. Well. In practice, uh, we want to make sure we, when we're capturing an image, we want to make sure we have detail in all of the pixels that we're capturing. So the idea in capturing an image really is to get the histogram to not show any spikes over on the right-hand side, because a spike would mean that some of the pixels have gotten so bright they have no detail. And similarly, we don't want any dark pixels, black pixels, uh, on the left side of the histogram that are spiking, because Again, any time we have pure black pixels, we have no texture, no detail. So the object is, we, but we like to have a little bit of pure white and pure black in an image. We call that a black point. We call it a white point. And it, it, it gives uh, to our eyes a nice, pleasing representation of the image. So the idea is to stretch out the histogram as much as you can, make it fill, make the data, the mountains of data that we're looking at here, uh, in the histogram. Make, stretch it out and make them fill the whole area from the left side to the right side. But you don't want them going over the right side. You don't want them going over the left side if you can help it. Okay. Any capture that gets anywhere in between is basically a pretty good capture. Now in this case what happened is we underexposed the image probably by about two f-stops. And the problem is that I can with processing tools in Photoshop, I can stretch that histogram so that the mountain of data, which right now is at the middle of the histogram, gets shifted over to the right side where it should belong. That's the sky tones and the clouds and, and uh, the, the very bright leaves and the vegetation. However, if I do that, I take the chance that as I stretch it out, that as I bring up some of the dark tones, the dark tones also get stretched out a bit toward the right-hand side. And when they come up, they have detail, but a lot of that detail is a contribution from electronic noise. So we're trying to minimize that. So ideally, when we capture an image, we don't want to capture an image where we only use basically half of the available histogram to capture the image. Now, we should say in a histogram that the axis on the histogram, the, the x-axis, is the brightness values that the sensor can capture. And basically, we use, for each channel, we have a red, a blue, and a green channel worth of data, which is why you see different colors uh, on this histogram. It's a, it's a composite of all three. Uh, but the brightness values go from a pure black, which is assigned a value of 0, 
and they go to a pure white which is assigned a value of 255. So basically 0 and 255 don't have any detail at all. But the pixels that have brightness levels between 1 and 254, ah, they have brightness. Okay, they have uh, uh, texture and detail associated with them. Those are good pixels. So when we're looking at the histogram, basically we're trying to average out m most of those pixels so that we get some really nice mid-tone exposure in the image. The height of the pixel, the shape of the, the height of the histogram, the shape of the histogram really doesn't mean anything. It just indicates for every given brightness level how many pixels have that brightness value at the moment. And as we shift the histogram around, the pixel values may change. All right, so let's start. I, what I've done here is I've, in the layers palette, I've made a copy of the background layer because I want to play with some tools and I don't want to add adjustment layers, which I would normally do by clicking down here and choosing from an option. I don't want to do that here because the tools that come up are awful small and hard for you to see. So I would rather, in a case like this, um, go up on top and go up to image and adjust. And we basically have four sets of commands. Brightness, contrast is one, levels, curves, and exposure. These are four different sets of commands for adjusting the, the tonal values of the images. So let's start with exposure. Exposure is uh, one that isn't used a lot. Uh, in fact, almost used not at all anymore. But the idea of exposure is we, can, we have an exposure slider. And if I move it a lot in one direction, you can see it lightens up the picture. If I move it in the other direction, it darkens down the picture. It's kind of useful because it does tell us right away where our, um, what, you know, how, how far we are underexposed. So let's say we start with the histogram we're looking at. We can see where the mountain sort of ends right in the middle over on the right-hand side. Uh, I have some presets built into this. One of the presets is to show you what a two-stop underexposure looks like. Two stops more than what we currently have. Okay. So that's two stops under. You can see it's very dark. And if you look at the histogram, and I can click on the little warning to update the histogram, you see the histogram, the pixels in the histogram that used to be up around the middle of the histogram have now shifted down into the shadow area quite a bit. So this is a very underexposed picture at this point. And if I go to, uh, if we go to minus one, okay, you notice, see the pixels are shifting back up a bit if you look at the histogram. And if I go back to the zero setting, which was right there. That's, that's where we had captured the image. But this wasn't an ideal capture. We really wanted to capture a brighter image. So if I, again, go look at the positive side, a plus one f-stop gives us just about the right amount of exposure. Okay, you can see here, when we look at the histogram, and let me update it, that the histogram now is stretched out so it pretty much fills the, the, the data fills the entire width of the histogram. And the better part is there are no spikes. There's no spikes of data on the right side indicating that the highlights are washed out. There's no spikes on the dark side, on the black side, indicating that the blacks have blocked up, is the term that we used to use in the old days. And um, so that's, that's a pretty decent capture. If we go up one more f-stop and show you another f-stop worth of exposure. Okay, you see what happens at this point, and again, I'll refresh the histogram. What we have now is we are starting, the, the, histo the data in the histogram is going right up to the right edge, and it's not coming back down to the zero line before it hits the right edge. So that's telling us that some of the pixels are clipping and that they're actually turning into a washed out white with no detail. Now, something else I should point out here when we're looking at the data is up in the top on the on the uh, right side, we have the navig the info palette, and it, it, we have RGB. This stand, these are the, the brightness values for the red, the blue, and the green channel, wherever I happen to put my cursor over the pixels in the image. So if you watch the numbers here, and I put my cursor, which in this case looks like an eyedropper, over the white cloud, for example, you see that there are two sets of numbers for each channel. The first set, the 132, for example, for the red channel, is the value, the brightness of the red channel for that pixel that we captured when I shot it, the image about two steps, or about one half stop, sorry, underexposed. You can see what happens when we went, when we increased the exposure by two half stops. Um, you can see that number went up to 255. That means that that white is washed out. There's no detail there at all. 
<clears throat> if I darkened the picture back down, it would that white would come down as a dirty gray. It would not come down as a cloud that has fine detail in it that you can see the fine detail. And that's true of the green channel and the blue channel in this case. So basically all of the, the three channels have been washed totally washed out at that point up in that part of the image. The other thing you note here is that we've lost a little bit of our blacks. We had some areas down in the other, down amongst the trees, the dark shadows that were fairly dark. And they've also increased uh, a bit. You can see numbers that, for example, right there was, the, those, uh, initially, those, that pixel that I'm hovering over had a value of 8 for each of the channels. And now it's up to uh, 17 or 18. So we have blown out that, we're not blown out, we have increased the brightness of those dark values, but not nearly as much as we've increased the brightness of the highlight areas of the picture. They've got, they were changed dramatically. They went from, you know, 130 to 255. So uh, at least an order of magnitude more brightness um, compared to, to what happened to the darks, okay? So in any case, so what you should try to do when you're taking pictures like this is try to, um, set it so that the the histogram is going to be somewhere in this case right around there so that the histogram is going to show us uh, a nice tonal range so that we have some dark areas that are almost pure black we have some whites that are just on the edge of blowing out and but the rest of the image is, has a nice overall balance to it now the image still may not look exactly like we would like here in other words, you, we want to emphasize different things in the image. Sometimes we might, might want to emphasize the reflection of the bridge in the, in the water. I might want to emphasize the little shed or the building on the, on the uh, right-hand side. Maybe we want to bring up some more detail in the trees. So even though I have the ends of the histogram set properly at this point, we still need to work on the midtones of the image. Now, exposure doesn't do a good job of that. It does have a gamma correction value here, which I can adjust. And you see if I move it. It can go in one direction. It, it basically takes those midtones and makes them very dark. And in the other direction, it takes those midtones and it makes them washed out. And it's a hard thing to control. And it's not a, not a control that anybody practically uses anymore. The offset basically shifts the entire histogram up and down. If I move the histogram in one, that direction, you see what it did is it just slid the whole histogram over to the right. So now all the areas that had detail in the blacks, the dark shadows and whatever, are basically gotten very weak and washed out. And if I go in the other direction with the offset, go to the negative with it, okay, then what happens is some the midtones that were you know showing detail are now gone to almost total black. So again, this is not a, a tool that we use very often, okay? And, um, all right, so let me th throw out exposure. It's something, it's worth noting that, you know, uh, it's, it's good to get a good exposure, but this particular tool is not particularly useful, and I don't think anybody uses this anymore in Photoshop. So I'm going to toss that out. One of the other tools that's been around forever that is more useful is um, the brightness sliders for brightness and contrast okay and there's actually two sets of settings for these um, let's see if I can slip that in right there okay so basically what we have here is we have a brightness and contrast separate sliders and um, think of it as brightness controls the midtone values you can lift the, the midtone values lift the brightness of all of the pixels depending on how you have this set up Contrast, on the other hand, works more on the dynamic range of the image. It, it says how many f-stops are there of light between a pure black and a pure white. So if we have a high contrast situation, then we have a lot of, um, uh, of f-stops. Uh, on a bright sunny day, you might have 14 f-stops between the way your eye sees, a, a, or even the way the camera sees, a, a very dark black and something that is right on the edge of washing out. Um, that could be 14 to f stops. On an overcast cloudy day, that could be as low as four or five f stops. Okay? So, but the interesting thing about the brightness is there used to be brightness used, I and mean, contrast used to work different than they do now. By default, there's a little box down here that says use legacy. If you check that box, what happens is if I increase the brightness, it increases all of the pixels in the image by the same amount. So let's say I drag it up here. Okay? 
and I put my cursor somewhere. And again, if we look at the numbers up in the info palette up above for where I put my cursor, you see what it did is it basically it increased all of the numbers by 40, by, by 30, um, about 34 brightness uh, values, okay? And if I go down to the real dark areas and look in those dark areas and hover over one of those, oh, even though the numbers are still a lot smaller, but you see now the brightness has been increased by, um, I said it was 34 for the other one, it's 33, 30, yeah, no, it's 34 for, for these. So it's lightening up the, the blacks just as much. It's, it's adding an absolute amount of brightness to the blacks, adding an absolute amount to the midtones, adding an absolute amount to the highlights in the picture. So that makes it very difficult to control because, you know, we really wanted to brighten up the picture, but I didn't want to wash out those areas. So that was a problem with using this legacy checked. Now, you could compensate for this. And actually, the other interesting thing is you see as I move the brightness around, if you watch the histogram, you see what it does is it moves the entire histogram. It shifts it completely from one direction up to the other side. But the, the, the width of the histogram, uh, of the data in the histogram, pretty much stays the same when we're in the legacy mode, all right? So it's lightening or darkening the endpoints of the histogram as well as the midtones of the histogram. Now, contrast, on the other hand, uh, let's see, let me set this to a value about there. Uh, what I'm trying to shoot is I'm just trying to make it, put this histogram in the middle, more or less. If you have it still checked for legacy and we start playing with the contrast, what the contrast does is it spreads out the histogram or it compresses the histogram. It's like the histogram was a, a piece of uh, a taffy and you're sort of pulling the taffy out to make it fit the window or you're squishing it in to make it into a narrow roll, sort of. So let's see what happens. So if I lower the contrast in the image, okay, you see what it does is it compresses the data in the histogram, you see? It get, they get narrower, narrower, narrower. And so they, so from a, basically the, the data that represents here is, is only a small part. We're a long way from having a pure black or a pure white. All we have are midtones, and the more I lower the contrast, you know, the more mid the midtones get. If you go in the other direction, when we go to the positive side, okay, see now it's stretching out the histogram. It's stretching it out to fill, to fill the histogram, stretching out the data to fill the histogram, all right, and Basically, and the other thing it's doing is it's increasing the contrast of the image. All right, so now we have blacks, we have pure whites, but our whites are going whiter, our blacks are going blacker. So if I take this too far, okay, let me keep going, there we go. See, by the time I take the contrast up that high, we totally washed out our sky. Everything there is a pure white, and, and even areas that had a lot of detail in them down in the bottom are now pure blacks. So in the legacy setting here for contrast, as well as for brightness. It's the, when we move these sliders, we're affecting both the white point, the black point, and the midtones. So everything's being affected. And that was always a problem because it makes it very difficult when you only had this tool available to you, it made it very difficult to try to figure out, you know, how to, how to get a good balance of what's going on here. What you had to do here, basically, is you sort of had to play a combination of these two. So I would basically get the contrast to where it's sort of where I want. Then I would move the brightness a little bit to move the histogram around, lower the contrast a little bit more so it's not giving us spikes. See, when we talk about a spike, you can see over on the right side of the histogram that yellow that, that is sticking up. If watch as I go more, that gets higher and higher. All right. So we don't. That means we're really clipping when we do that. We don't want to do that. So I'm bringing down the contrast to a spot of around there. And then the question is, you know, what can I do with the brightness? Well, I'm limited to some extent. As I do that, it shifts it over. I do that, it goes dark. So you only had one combination that sort of worked here, okay? You sort of had to get the contrast right. You sort of had to get the brightness right. And you sort of had to be happy with what you had. Now, if I click on the preview on and off, that's what we started with, and that's what we had. So we said that was a 1F stop underexposed picture to start with, okay? So we basically have expanded it out and made it a little bit brighter, but we still are nowhere near having, you know, sort of the punch to the picture that we would like to have. So brightness and contrast worked, but it was tough to use. So somewhere around, I don't know when, I think when Photoshop went to probably up around CS2 or 3 version, 
um, which was really like Photoshop 9 version from the original versions. Uh, what they did is they they put this box in where you can uncheck legacy. And now what happens with this box is that it tries to change the brightness of the midtones and the contrast of the midtone image uh, pixels in the image, but it tries not to affect the endpoints, the black point and the white point in the image. So now, for example, if you watch the brightness, you can see that as I move the brightness up, okay, you can see that the histogram is moving to the right, but it's not moving that far away from the left edge. It's moving a little bit, okay? So some of those dark tones down at the bottom are lightening up a bit. But basically, I can take the brightness all the way up to there now, all right? And I really haven't washed out my, my uh, blacks like I had in the previous, uh, when I checked the legacy, used the legacy box, all right? And the same thing happens when you go in the other direction. If I bring that down, okay, you see what happens is I'm now, as I'm making it darker, I'm, I'm darkening down the midtone pixels, but I'm darkening down the midtone pixels a lot more than I'm darkening down either the highlight, the, the very almost white pixels and, and the total black pixels. All right. So this gives us a little bit better control over affecting the midtones without screwing up the, the endpoints. We like to set, you know, a, a black point and a white point and sort of keep it there. Uh, it just our mind works in that way. We want to see something that's a little bit black in an image, something that's almost a pure white in an image. Um, it sort of helps our eye figure out what's going on. All right. So let me put this back to. Now, the other thing is the contrast works pretty much uh, the same way now. Now the contrast is increasing and in spreading out the histogram, but again, it's tr it's not going beyond the pure black and a pure white, at least not as easily as it did when we had the legacy box checked. So if I increase the contrast, see what's happening is it's spreading out the histogram. Okay. Now, in this case, we are losing it is pushing it on our blacks to some extent here, which I'm going to compensate for here a little bit by opening up my my uh, brights a little bit. Okay. All right. So if I go all the way up to this to this end, basically, with the contrast, uh, I still basically have a white point and I have a black point. And the white point isn't, you see, the brightest thing in it is probably these clouds right here. Maybe that one right there. It's actually probably this one. And if you look at the info values, they're up to 233, 223, 233 in that range. So they haven't blown out. And the blacks down here, although they're, they're dark, they went from 14 down to 8, but they haven't gone down to 0. So it's pushing us to an extreme. We, we still aren't blowing out our, uh, uh, our endpoints. If I go in the other direction on contrast, and what this is doing is making it less and less contrasty. All right, so we're shrinking that down as best as we can. And if I move my brightness up to sort of balance where it is. Okay, so in this situation, I have I now have a wider histogram in terms of the data than I started with. We can show you that here. Okay, and um, then it's the histogram is wider at this point, and it doesn't it the black we still have some dark you know the the darkest darks are still down there, they are lighter than they were initially. Okay, because we've got the other pixels around them, but again we're not totally blowing out the whites or the blacks, and by dropping the contrast we've lowering the contrast down so that all the pixels fit within the data so we don't really in a situation like this we're not we're not certainly not clipping any white we're not clipping any black and a lot of the pixels that should have been you know very dark almost pure black have now gone up m more toward the midtones and the pixels here that should have been very very light have gone down toward the midtones a bit so that we basically have a flatter looking image than we started with before okay just doesn't have the co contrast punch that this one does so that's sort of the basic way they work. So so nowadays, again, brightness and contrast are useful for doing small touch-ups. The problem with brightness and contrast is you can't control the ends of the picture. Whatever it does on the left side, it does on the right side uh, for both brightness and contrast. So it 
you know, if you say, okay, I really have a situation where I want to lighten up the darks a little bit, but I don't want to lighten up the, the, the highlights very much at all. That's a tricky situation. You can't really do that very well with um, bright, just brightness and contrast. So although we still use this for, in a situation where we want to do both, um, it's not as useful as it could be. So they developed other tools to improve on this. So let me shut that off. And the next tool that, that they went for was levels. Okay. And what levels does for us is, let me position it, actually let me position it down here. Uh, okay, we're back to our starting histogram, the one one stop underexposed picture, basically. All right. And so think of it as this way. This is the black point uh, for this little slider here. And we have a white slider and then we have a gray neutral slider for the midtones. And these, this upper three are used to control the contrast. So what I do is I look at the histogram and I say, well, okay, I've got some pixels in the image that are almost pure black, so that's good. I, I almost like where that is. At most, I would move this up just a little bit more to make those blacks go a little bit darker. I, can I show you that? If you look over here on the left side of the picture, and if I just bring in this little slider just a little bit, right to about there. See, it's a subtle change, but let's see if we can tell it. You can see it? You can clearly see it happening there. Okay? So that's a possibility. You, you may be farther than you want to go. And in fact, in my, for my taste, it is a little bit. But I'm bringing that in from a value of 0 to a value of 3. So what that's doing is it's saying any pixel that had a value, previously had a value of 3, after I move that slider, it's now going to have a, a value of 0. All right? So it's going to get 3 units darker in terms of brightness. Now, on the highlight end, um, we have a slider that starts at 255, but our data really doesn't, our data really starts about in here somewhere, okay? Actually, you could, the temptation is to take the slider and move it all the way in to the mountain starts, okay? Now, if we do that and we update our histogram over here, you can see we got a, a spike coming up on the right edge of the histogram. That says that some of the data, some of the pixels in our histogram are, are being totally blown out and are not recoverable. And the pixels that are being blown out is this little dark black line you can see over in this histogram on the left side. All right, those are real pixels. You may, you may say they're okay, we don't mind blowing those out, but maybe we don't want to. And in fact, if I hover over in a picture of this white cloud, See, those values for that cloud have gone from like 155 up to 255. So that they've totally blown out by doing that. If I bring this slider back to where those start, which is right about there, okay, go back up to that same area in the clouds, all right, now my 155 pixels are up to like 218, but they're not 255. They're not blown out, all right? So... That's not a bad spot. You might, you could split the difference if you want and keep them just under 255, somewhere around there. Okay, they're up to 235 now. All right, so that's not a bad spot for it. And if I show you before and after here, so that's where we started. Okay, and by just adjusting these sliders, and, and in essence, what the slider does, in addition to redefining the highlight pixels and the, and the shadow pixels. It's also in effect giving, it's also effect changing the contrast. As we move those sliders closer together, the contrast to the image increases. So you see we have more pop to the image. The blacks are blacker, the whites are whiter. There's more f-stops worth of tonal range in between the purest black and the purest white in an image like this. Okay, so that got us a long ways. Now if we had a situation where sometimes, and, and I'll show it in a different picture, but there's another set of sliders down at the bottom, and they do just the opposite of what the up top two uh, do. What happens with these is, let's say I want these, I have these blacks, and I'm going to artificially move this up so that we have too much black, okay? But just assume that, that this was what the histogram looked like to start with, it, with this slider all the way over at the edge and the picture were that dark. If I go to the output slider down here and I drag it in, see what it does? It lightens up those really, the dark areas of the picture. It's basically reducing the contrast. The same thing on this end. If I bring this one in, it gives us a flatter looking image, you see? So we don't have as contrasty an image when we're done. And in fact, if I look, you can see what it did to the histogram. 
when I update the histogram here. The histogram that should have been filling up pretty much, you know, initially it, it started right at the left edge and it went all the way to the middle. It basically has removed all of that information. It it's it basically has taken the, the data and it's made it all midtones instead of having some highlights, shadows, and midtones. All right. So generally you don't use these bottom sliders very often, but sometimes when you go out and you shoot and you can't contain all of your data within the histogram because it was just so contrasty. You know, noon on a summer day, you know, middle of August, and you're shooting a white building against, you know, a black uh, pavement. You know, it, you just, there's no way in, in that your camera, even as good as today's cameras are, is going to be able to record that scene without losing some detail, either, you know, highlights blowing out or blacks blocking up. So when you get a situation like that, and you can, you can come in, and, and if you've shot in RAW, and the data is really there in RAW, but you're just not seeing it in the camera, you can come into this command, you can come down to the output levels, and the, your histogram will look like it's, you know, just filling from one end to the other with spikes on both sides. You can move these sliders in, and you can basically make that histogram, the data in the histogram, fit the window of the histogram, and it won't look so contrasty. You're just lowering the contrast enough to maintain detail everywhere where you want it. So this is a very strong and powerful system for doing this, okay? So let me back that off for a second, go back out to there. All right, so we're fairly happy with that. But one of the things is, again, we're affecting the, we've redefined sort of what is the white point, and we've redefined what is the black point. But the midtones are still just the midtones. But we have this midtone slider now. If we move it in this direction, it darkens down the midtones. Without affecting, you'll notice the highlights or the shadows, the, the real dark shadows very much. See, those clouds are really not changed much when you do that. If you go in the other direction, where we're lightening things up, Again, you see it's lightening up the, sh the mid-tones to, and, and the shadows, but not the real darkest, darkest shadows. And it's not having, again, much of an effect on the, the white point, all right? So this allows you to put the finishing touch, if you like, on an image. So let's say I'm happy with it. You know, I want where I want to see detail. I like to see detail in here and here. I want to see the, just a hint of black and the deep shadows and I don't want to blow out my clouds. This is not a bad spot to be. And if you see where we started from, that's where we started from, and that's where we went to. And again, if we look at our, let me look at our histogram. Okay, so this is now the updated histogram for where we are. Versus, remember the histogram when we started was uh, down, was only filling the, the bottom half of the screen. All right, so, this gives us good control. This is a very powerful tool, and we use it a lot. The one disadvantage it sort of has is that it's not as easy to go in and target specific areas of the picture. Uh, well, nowadays, we have masking, so if I wanted to lighten up the bridge or darken the bridge, I can basically make a selection of the bridge, and I can mask out everything else in the image, and I can just you know lighten up, use tools to lighten up the, the bridge. Uh, or darken down the bridge. But we didn't have really good masking tools way back when, when they were developing these tools. So one of the re things you had to do is you had to look at certain pixels and say, well, you know, I'd like to bring up the tones that are about this level, but I don't want to affect the tones that are this level. So how do we do that? So they came up with a new tool for doing that, and they called it Curves. So let me get out of here. In fact, let me go back, reset this so we can start again and cancel out there. All right, and so what we're going to do is go up to Image, we're going to go to Adjust, and we're going to come down to Curves. Now, Curves is sort of incorporates everything the other tool tools did. All right, it, think of the curves as being levels on an angle. So where we had, you know, a black slider, and we had a middle slider, and we had a, 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 a right slider, a highlight slider, uh, over in the, the um, levels command, we have those same controls here, except they're on a diagonal line, all right? And again, this is our starting histogram, and you can see it, it's only filling part of the screen. And we want to spread that out to make it fill more of the screen. So um, let's see, what can we do here? Uh, all right, so the other thing that this does is, is it affects brightness 
and contrast, just like the brightness and contrast controls. When we were using the legacy box checked in brightness, when you increase brightness, what it did is it created a new line. This, this line is giving us the value of our pixels. Now, what it's saying is that for this any particular spot, let me pick a spot. Uh, can I do that here? Let's see. Yes. See, I controlled clicked and it put a point on the, in the middle of the screen, which is about where a midtone is. Let me go down and do a control click on a dark area. It added a point down here. And let me go up to that real bright spot up here in the clouds. Do a control click. So right now, that's the brightest spot. That little black dot there is the brightest spot in our image. And what it tells us when we click on that spot is it says that that value, that pixel has a, a, a composite average value of 160 brightness units, okay, out of, out of 255. And the output on this command, it allows us to change the value of those pixels to whatever we want. So we have an input value is 160. What do we want our output value to be? Well, if I, let me drag this, these other two points off here for a second. If I go to this point up here and I click on it and I drag it up, see what it's doing is it's changing the input value from 159 and it's, it's redefining that point in a brighter value, 176. And the result is the image got brighter. Okay? If I click on and off on the preview, you can see that that brightened up the image for us. All right. If I drag it further up, it gets even brighter. If I drag it below the original line, the horizontal line, it gets darker. Now, because it's affecting that point, but it's also affecting all the other points that were on that line initially, except it's not affecting the end point. The pure black is staying black. The pure white point is staying white because those, those are the end points, and we don't let them float. All right? So right now, this is doing that. It's, it's either brightening the midtones or darkening the midtones, but not affecting the end points. And that's exactly what the middle slider was doing over in the levels command. All right. Once we, we set our black point and our white point by bringing the, the left and right sliders into where we were happy. And then we move that middle slider around to brighten up or darken the midtones. So this is acting just as though. So if you have this command, the, you don't really need levels, basically. Um, what about brightness and, 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 uh, and contrast? Well, again, brightness, if you have the, the legacy box unchecked, works exactly the same way. You, it, it tries to fix the two endpoints, and, and it allows you to, the brightness slider allows you to move the, the, the midtones in between. Okay? So it do, it's doing the same kind of thing. From a contrast stand, standpoint, the way you change well, okay, the way you change contrast is you want to make the lights lighter and you want to make the dark tones darker. That increases the contrast. So when you do that on curves, all you have to do is grab a point somewhere up near the top end and drag it up. You see it lightens up the lights and the rest of the midtones to some extent. It lightens up everything where the, the new line is moved away from the old line. But if we, take, if we go down to the bottom here and we grab and we drag it down, about the same amount we grabbed the other one up. Okay, what that does is it, it dramatically increases the contrast of the image. Now we have a very contrast image compared to what we started with. Okay? That was our starting contrast. This is where we are now. So that allows us to do the same thing that the contrast slider does if we don't have the legacy value checked. Now if we want to lower the contrast, we do just the opposite. We take this point that which initially was on the line and we move it below the line. So we're bringing the highlights down, so we're making them darker. We're taking the dark areas and we're making them lighter by bringing them above the line. And the result is we get what we call an inverse S curve. And if we compare that, that's where we started. And now you see we've lowered the contrast in this scene. So again, that gives us very good control over what we're doing. So what are those old legacy values? Back when we were using brightness and contrast, and we check the legacy box. Well, what that does is it allows these two endpoints to move. So if you use the brightness slider, think of it as you're redefining it. Let's move this one up. We're basically working off this, this 45 degree, degree line and we're keeping it, uh, we're defining a new line that's higher than it in terms of values. Okay, it's higher than it was initially. And but it's at the same, it's parallel to the, to the 45 degree angle. 
So the line is still at a 45 degree angle. It's just gotten higher numbers. So a number that used to be, for example, for that top, top point, used to be 212 is now 255. All right. And you see what it did for the image when you look at it in the image. Okay. Is it bright? It lightened up the image. And again, not in a good way. And the same thing happens if you darken the image down. If we take that point and move it, say, down to there, and we take this point and we move it down below the line, but we keep it parallel to what we had before, somewhere about there, okay? That darkens the image down a lot, okay? And it does so by changing the endpoints, which we don't want to do in most cases. So again, that's where the legacy values uh, weren't working for us. But the point is that curves can, can mimic brightness and contrast checked for legacy or not. When we're not doing the legacy, um, it, uh, well, I did brightness. I didn't do. You, I didn't show you contrast. Contrast does the same thing. Again, we're going to change both the endpoints. To change the contrast, we're changing the slope of this line, right? Mathematically, if if the input value from here is 255, and we want it to be, we, well, let's say it's here, the input value. If I put a point right there, the input value is 192. The output value is 192. The slope is the output over the input, which is one to one, which gives us a slope of one. If we want to make it a, a stronger slope so it's more contrasty, then what I have to do is I have to move that point up, okay? And when I move it up, you see it goes from 195 to 221. But if I'm just changing the contrast and the legacy value, I want to basically move that one up. I want to move the, the corresponding point here down about the same amount, okay? And what I'm looking at is the line that's between the two points. I want that slope to be a steeper slope. Now, if we had the legacy values unchecked, I'm sorry, if we had the legacy value checked in the um, contrast uh, command, what that would do is it would allow this endpoint to float into there, and it would allow this endpoint to float over there. So the idea is we're making a new straight line, diagonal line, but that diagonal line has a steeper slope than it did before. And the effect is if we have a steeper line, we increase the contrast. So if I turn the preview on and off, that's where we started. And you see now where it's a much more contrasty image. If I go in the other direction, if we pull that point off and that point off, and, and all I'm going to do is bring this point down below the original line and this point above the original line, okay? Let's not go quite that far so it doesn't look so dramatic. Oops. Okay, so we've lowered the contrast in the scene quite a bit. That's where we started, and now this is where we are. So the contrast has come down quite a bit by doing that. All right. So again, not something we want to do typically. So we've gotten away from doing these legacy settings, and instead the, the idea is to do as much adjustment as we can without ever changing the two endpoints. We want the endpoints to, to be there. But again, in this case, okay, so that's, you know, before and after is the same right now. But remember, this picture is underexposed. So to get a proper exposure for this one, what I really need to do is I need to move the, the, the endpoint just like I would in levels. I need to move it in to where the data starts, okay, right about there, all right? And this one, well, I don't need, really need to move it much, but just a hair, okay? And when I do that, all right, then I can turn my preview on and off. That's where we started, and we get this, which is a much more pleasing scene, at least to me. Okay, the clouds got more punch to them. They're brighter. The midtones are brighter. We still have the shadow in the details. We have details in the shadows. <laughs> and hopefully we have some pure black somewhere in the image. Okay? Now, if you're not happy with that, doing that, in curves. Then the other thing you can do is you can say, all right, now suppose now having set these two points so they're not going to move, now I can go in and I can brighten up the image overall. I can go to the midtones and I can pull the midtones up a little bit. Okay, and as I do that, you see it's brightening up the area in the middle there. All right, or I can darken down the midtones a little bit if that's what I want to do. So this gives you good control. And you can even distinguish between, you know, where this is and where that is. Let me get rid of this point for a second. 
And again, if I want to, if I hold down the control key and I click on, on there, it shows me that's what the brightness value is that corresponds to that point. If I come down into this area, control click, that's the brightness value that corresponds down here. So if I, if I want to change this, but I don't want to change this point, what I can do is I can put a couple of points in between to lock it in place. Okay, and then I can come down to this point down here and I can grab it and I can lighten it up a little bit. And you see what that does is it's lightening up those shadows just a little bit. Oops, a little bit higher. Don't want to go quite that much. Let's say there. Okay, so and where's my preview button? Okay, so we start there and now we go to there. So you can basically, using this curves command, you can fine tune it very delicately and go in and target various areas along the way. Now they've actually added a, uh, a little hand here so that you can go out into the area. I think you can click and sort of drag. See as I move my cursor around it shows me where that point is. It's where it's active. And when I click it puts the point on the line and now I can drag and move the point. Okay, So I can target selected areas. Okay, if I decide I want to go in here and lighten up these shadows a little bit, I just pull that up a little bit. Now, of course, the problem is, is, is you know, it's not only lightening up that little dark area there, but it's also lightening up whatever else is going on around the picture. And so it actually would be better if I got rid of those points while I'm trying to do this. Uh, okay, so we've got that. So let's say I go to there. And I want to lighten that up a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right. So I can bend it that much, which lightened up the, the cloud. All right. I can come down to this area here. And I could selectively try to darken that down a little bit. All right. You could go to the bridge over here. And we can see where are we playing. Bring the bridge up just a little bit. All right. And again, that's what we start with, and that's what we end up with. Okay. So, it's um, these these are very powerful tools. Um, and nowadays, because of Camera Raw, we've gone to these sliders in Camera Raw, which are the exposure slider, black point, white point, clarity, and then shadow and highlights. And in essence, they allow us to get almost to the same spot we can with this. You can still get finer detail and more accurate adjustments going through the curves command than you can with any other tool in Photoshop. However, for practical speaking and for speed, most of us are happy to go into Camera Raw and use the Camera Raw settings to do the same thing that we're, we're trying to do here. So if I throw this out, for example, and let's see, can I go back to Camera Raw? I think I, I'm not sure. I think I can. Filter. Let's go. Yeah, Camera Raw Filter. All right, so we're bringing up the same starting image in Camera Raw now. And, um, oops, get rid of that. Okay. Okay, so, but now I have, I have all these sliders over here that are available to me. All right, so first thing I can do is I can just, again, watching my histogram, you notice we're underexposed here. I go to the exposure slider, click on it, and just drag it so it brings the histogram up to more or less where I want it to be. Okay. Then the next thing we typically recommend doing is coming down to clarity because clarity can affect the endpoints, the black and white endpoints. And we decide we want to add a little clarity to the image, to give it a little more snap. We do that one next. And then we, we set our white point and our black points. And again, we can turn on, we can turn on little warnings on the, on the, uh, up in the corners of the histogram such that if I increase my whites, you see it's shifting the whites now selectively toward the end of the histogram. And when I go too far, you can see it's showing me what areas are starting to blow out. They turn red first. So the idea is you just go to the, that point and back off just a little bit. Come down to the black slider. And be, because I've got the warning turned on, if I go too far with the black slider, you see it starts coming in as this sort of indigo blue. And I don't want to, and everything that's under there at the moment is going to be turned pure black. So I don't want that to happen. I want it to back off just till they disappear. All right. So that's telling me that we're filling the full histogram. We have to, the whitest white we can, the blackest black we can, and still not clip 
anything out of the out of the image. And then having done that, then it's a matter of adjusting what do you want to do with these with the midtones. And so we have two other sliders that are worth it. Actually, there's a, there's a contrast slider we can go in and play with. And this is like the traditional contrast slider with the legacy box unchecked. So if I increase the slider, I can make the scene more contrasty. And again, it's not changing the, the black and white points very much. It, it will get to them eventually. Okay, I can go make it less contrasty that way. So you sort of set the tone of how, where do you want your contrast to be with this contrast slider. But even having done that, and I tend to like to keep things a little on the contrasty side myself. Even having done that, you now have a highlight slider that if we want to, for example, lighten up the clouds more, I can bring it up. And see, as I go too far, it does eventually hit the highlights, and I would have to reset my white point. But more than likely, what we like to do to get more drama in the sky is we want to move the highlight slider down so that it makes a separation between the tones and the clouds to make the clouds more dramatic and to give us more blue in the blue sky. Okay. And if we want to see more detail down in these dark areas, we have a shadow slider, which if we move it down, it closes those down a bit. But if we move it up, we can open up those shadows. And remember, nowadays a lot of people do HDR photography. And the HDR programs basically get rid of all the blacks, all the shadows in an image. And that's not good. Your eye needs black to give you a sense of depth in an image. That's the way our eye senses that something's at a distance and that things are at different distances because it looks at the shadows and how dark the shadows are and how the shadows fall off in an image. So I generally you don't want to, you know, a lot of people you'll see them nowadays, they just automatically take shadows all the way up and highlights all the way down. And eventually it gives you that sort of HDR fake look to it. Um, but I don't think most people want to go that far most of the time. All right. So I think you're better off being a little conservative on that. Leave some shadows. Give, let the, give the eye something to play with. Okay. So now we've got the image here. And you see, we could have done all this in curves. And in fact, it's pretty close to where we ended up uh, in curves. And um, let's see, is there a before and after? They've changed around CS, th this version, the, the CC214. They did away with the preview button that used to be up here so you could see what you were doing. And instead, they've added these buttons down at the bottom. And if you click on that one, it shows you a before and an after. Or if you want them in one, it shows you the before and the after. Or top to bottom, or split top to bottom. Okay, so probably that's the most useful for us at the moment. Okay, so... Um, All right, I'll come back to there. Now, the only thing we haven't done here is we haven't played with color saturation. And so your next step is, you know, in a scene like this, saturation moves all the colors, all the channels. You have three channels, red, blue, and green. And if you increase the saturation, it increases all three channels. And it's okay to get away with it a lot in, in, um, if, you, if it's just a landscape picture. I can bring up the saturation and make this look like it's really sexy. Well, except you see, Mom, my, my sky has gone a little too yellow here, the clouds. Um, and we're actually picking up a yellow cast, so that's too far to go. The real terrible thing with saturation is if you have a person in the picture along with scenery, if you increase the saturation, the person's skin tones go red very quick. They go quicker, turn red quicker than anything else happening in the image, and people don't look good with red skin tones. So instead of using saturation, what we tend to do now is, unless we have some really pressing need to increase all of the... Uh, um, all of, the, all of the channels equally, we use Vibrance instead. Because what Vibrance does is it primarily increases the greens and the blues and less the yellows and the reds. And eventually it's going to start affecting everything. But it gives you a better shot working this way. Okay? So you can actually pop it to about like that. Now we also have other controls in... in, in um, if we, we, we can play with the details when we're in Camera Raw or in Lightroom, which Lightroom and Camera Raw are exactly the same in terms of the uh, controls that are available to manipulate the image. So, for example, if I go to go to the tone curve, and there is, you see, there is a curve that's available to us in, um, in Camera Raw and in Lightroom, and just as there is in the main part of Photoshop. Now, what they've done is they've got, they've got what they call parametric and they've got point. 
if we click on the point one, we're doing exactly what I was showing you before in Photoshop. I can move it up, I can move it down, I can do whatever I want to it. Okay? Uh, but I have to do it point by point. If I go with the paramatic, paramatic, whew, parametric <laughs> sliders, then what we have is they've broken up this, the curves into like four sections. So if we want to go with the, with the shadows, for example, see if I go down with the shadows, you see how it's bending the curve in, in down here, in, and it's also affecting the histogram in the same way. But I can basically target the dark areas, okay, the, the, the deep shadows, all right? I can go in and with the dark slider, okay, we're hitting the midtones, we're hitting the darks, but, but further along on the histogram. In other words, the, the shadow slider did the extreme edges here, whereas the darks tend to, you know, go from about three quarters of the way down to, you know, down to the one quarter of the way. They're affecting it in that area for the most part. And uh, reset that. And the lights are affecting the top part of the curve, but not the extreme end of the top of the curve. Okay. And the highlight is the one that goes after the very top end of the curve. So you can fine tune these either, you know, without having done the other adjustments in the basic panel of of um, Lightroom or or um, Adobe Camera Raw, you, or you can come in here and sometimes just touch things up. I tend to use this primarily to um, just to touch up to touch up the shadows just a little bit. I tend to like to just to add a little more black sometimes by just coming in here and bending that black down just a little bit. All right. If I don't do it there, then I'll go over to the point curve and do the same thing. I'll I'll lock in some points. I'll put a point there and there. Oops, there and there. Just trying to lock in this rest of the curve so it doesn't bend too much. And then I come down here and grab a point and pull it down just a little bit. Just to give me a little bit more blackish black. Okay. And uh, well, I guess that goes all the way back. Okay. Now, the other thing we can do while we're in here is we can come down to where the hue and saturation and luminance settings are. And for example, if we wanted to get rid of that yellow up here, we could uh, come down to the luminosity panel, all right? And we can um, take our yellow slider, for example, and we can increase the luminosity. You see, that's getting rid of the yellow that's in the clouds. It's taking those bright yellows when I do that, and it's just increasing the brightness of them so where it washes out the yellow. And it does it without affecting too much of the other yellow. The yellow down here is also being affected, but nowhere near as much as you would think it would be. Okay. And, um, and if I want to increase, for example, the blues, or I want to darken the blue sky down a little bit, I can just come down to the luminosity for the blues and bring that down a bit. And we get a nice blue sky. Okay. And suppose we want to bring our greens and down a little bit. Then I can switch over to saturation and I can increase the saturation selectively of the greens in the image. Now there's not a lot of, most greens are, you know, mixtures of yellow and green. I don't want to screw on too much with the yellow here. All right. But even with hue, you can go to the green slider and you can make it be less yellow and more green by shifting it in this direction. And now you can start to bring the greens out a little bit more. Okay. And back to the basic panel. So what we started with now, okay, so it's quite a difference, right? I mean, you have total control over the image uh, nowadays with a whole bunch of good commands to work in Photoshop and in Lightroom. And the question is, is can you do all this in Lightroom without having to go of Photoshop? And the answer probably is, for these kind of adjustments, yeah, sure. You can see I've, did them all, I've done them all here just in using Adobe Camera Raw, which is the equivalent of Lightroom. Uh, there are things that Photoshop does better that Lightroom can't do, but in terms of adjusting the tonal quality of the image and in terms of uh, doing global changes and now even local changes using adjustment brushes, that Lightroom is really catching up with um, Photoshop in terms of being able to do most of the things we need to do. 
So I'm going to, I think I'm going to stop. Oh, and I'm happy with this, by the way. I just click. And it closes the filter and goes back here to main part of Photoshop. And at this point, I'm going to stop this because we're way over time. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope it's helped to tell you a little bit about what all the different features do that are in uh, the, the levels commands, the curves command, the brightness and contrast controls.